Mailbag. Nice. It's the mailbag. You nice. talked over my intro. Nice. 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 Mailbag. It's nice. the mailbag. Nice. Yeah, nice. It's you a can nice just sample it in mailbag. like a DJ. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Nice. 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 Anyway, so what mailbag? we got? <laughs> yeah, mailbag. Let's get right to it. <laughs> I just want to say, um, it was. I've had a very, very emotional morning. Um, because it's my my youngest. Uh, her leavers day assembly was today, so she's leaving primary school, uh -huh. and it was all the kids and all the parents that I've known. Some of them I've known for like ten years. Yes. Um, and uh, they were they all sang a bunch of songs. They all just stand up and say a memory, their favorite memory from school, and everything like that. And it was uh, I was crying two seconds into the assembly, and I didn't. Did they stop. get certificates? No, they got a book, and they oh. got they get a yearbook. A yearbook ah. is, is coming Ooh. as well. But yeah, I, it was, uh... I, we 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 had the same thing yesterday for my son, who's mm. in the same situation, same sort of format. There was like pictures of them when they were little, when they first started singing. They 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 all sung a bunch of songs and stuff. But instead of sharing memories, they had like it was like a, an awards ceremony. Mm. They gave certificates, and uh, I I don't know if it was meant to be emotional, but I did not feel upset uh, throughout. Oh. And there was like, oh. it, but it was because. I'm going to sound like Lewis now. There's like little technicalities that kind of did it for me. Like uh, right. when we got in there, they were playing this song and it was kind of like this, you know, this acoustic song about leaving something or whatever. And it's meant to be sad. But the, the song stopped like short of the end, you know, like two seconds very abruptly and then started again. And the same song played like 10 times. Mm, and at that right. point, I was so annoyed that I don't think I could be. You. Yeah, it, 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 it did low key irritate me. And I, did, I, I, I felt just annoyed for the rest of the assembly. <laughs> I Do was you, unable to I, be emotional I, beyond that. I spoke to Ben about this the other day, because I think he's in a similar situation. He says, well, not, I think his son's a little, little bit younger than yours, but um, he said to me, like, it's funny because there's, you, as a parent, like he feels like sometimes he's dealing with a, a low low level of loss or like grief because you know he remembers his son grows up so quickly, you know, yes. kids grow up so quick, and you miss kind of who they were. That the person that they were isn't there anymore. There's there's now this new, older, different person, but there is this kind of strange feeling of like it's it's over, you know. And I guess is that what it was from the primary school thing. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was like the end of an era because obviously my eldest went to the school as well. So I've just been I've been taking my kids to that school. We've we're really good friends with a lot of the parents there now, and I've seen their kids grow up from like reception to like now they're like fourteen. That's my eldest year group, so we know a lot of those parents, and we just we've all sort of gone from our thirties into our forties together. Yeah, um, it was very emotional, and the kids were crying. So I started crying even more when I saw that. It was just, it was, I was a mess. Luckily, there were a couple of mums in front that we know that were passing me tissues because they started crying as well. Once their kids started crying, then they started crying. But right. I was just, I was just crying from the get go. It's very sad. It's like, it's been a huge part of my life. And now, you know, it's over. Yeah. I mean, you won't be going back there, I guess, um, unless there's a, some sort of a charity sale or like, you know, some church thing or, you know, something will bring you back to the, yeah. to the primary school, no doubt. And, and you'll, and it'll be sad to walk around. You know, I, I seem to remember that when I was uh, when I left primary school. You know, because it was in the same village as I grew up. Even though you know, through my teens, I ended up going there through mm. scouts or something or some 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 event just on the on the on the field outside. And yeah, it was always a little bit kind of bittersweet memories. Yeah, very sad. Slap, slap, get yourself together. Pull yourself together, All right, man. I'll try. I'll try. All right, I, let's. Uh... I love how in touch you are. I love the idea that you opened the, the crying as well. Well, I, I was the first one crying. There's no doubt about it. I was. <laughs> I I'm didn't a, have you down as a, as a, as as a crier. At, I cry uh, constantly. Well, Sips, look, maybe if one, maybe if there'd been a big bald dad next to you, bawling his eyes out, he would have set you off as well. I you doubt it. Sips you know, doesn't strike me as a crier at all. Maybe, maybe you need some deep thoughts. Have you ever heard of Jack Handy? No. Have you ever? Have is you this ever, a joke? No, it's a. It's an old. I don't even know if it's still running, but it's an old Saturday Night Live sketch called Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. And okay. it's it's like motivational <laughs> quotes and passages usually played over like, you know, there's a, a beach scene or some tranquil ocean scene in the background with some nice 90s piano music or whatever. Okay, I've got an example. Right. If trees could scream, 
would we be so cavalier about cutting them down? <laughs> yeah, That's stuff ridiculous. Like that. Listen to this one. Before you criticize someone, you should walk a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you're a mile away and you have their <laughs> shoes. <laughs> it's just it's stuff yeah. like that. You know? That's it's, a good one. Yeah, they're, they're, they're good ones. There's some, there's some funny like ones that. in there for sure. Yeah. All right, uh, so let's get to it. Some really, really a, a very mixed bag this week. Um, some very some. All right, listen, listen. I'm I'm going to be critical of some of the email inners. Right. Uh, I assume you're typing these on your phone, so it, it does make them very hard to read when it's just a block of text. Uh, let's let's work on some punctuation here, people, and some some basic composition. I want sentences. I would like some punctuation because I can't read it when your email is literally nonstop text. With no breaks and no punctuation, it ain't getting. Some read people out. just write like that, dude. Like yeah, some people don't use caps no, no, on that, text that's not good enough. I'm sorry. Some, some people, people have just to go write back like that. It's not good enough. That's not good enough. off the front of their no, tweets. No, it's not text. good enough. I'm sorry. It's not. Good I respect enough. it. No, I, a, I don't because it's it's, it's illegible. It's not a style. <laughs> there is a reason that things are laid out the way they are. That's how Listen, it's easy to it's read. It's refreshing because it gives you context to that person who's written this. If they send you a complete wall of text. With no punctuation at all. Yeah, guess what? It ain't you, getting read. You, you know what you're dealing can with. I, yeah, I, an can email I, that's going straight in the bin. I have something helpful here for you. Um, it's a, a song called Punctuation Rock, uh, <laughs> and it's featured on a Leapfrog laptop for kids. And uh, I'm aware of this song intimately because all three of my kids have used this Leapfrog laptop to death. And played all of these songs on it. Would you like to hear the lyrics to Punctuation Rock? It's helpful Absolutely. in this case. Absolutely, yeah, go for it. Okay. I won't do the music, but basically it goes, pun, 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 punctuation, pun, pun, <laughs> pun, punctuation. When there's a comma, you should pause for a beat. A period means that the sentence is complete, right? Oh, <laughs> nice. Right? Yeah, yeah. Full stop. Pum, 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 punctuation. And then there's the, the next part is, you've ever been hung up by a question mark? Have you? <laughs> or an exclamation to make your point. We're going to rock this joint. And then pum, 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 punctuation. So hopefully, um, just bear those lyrics in mind and it'll help you with your punctuation in your further emails for the mailbag. And remember, there, there, there's like two-year-old kids that listen to this and maybe possibly know better, Can write better through than you. hearing this. Uh, it's a classic. Well, in our household, at least, it is. Like, it's a banger. Everybody knows all the lyrics and everything. Yeah, it's a good one. It makes you tear up is it, oh, hearing that. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, here, if you guys want. I can hear, I can tell. Hang on yeah. a second. I've got a YouTube video here that I'll share with you as well, just so you get the full effect. You don't have to... Share it beyond. Just listen to it when you have a chance, okay? Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, All right. I guess you would just Google punk, punk, punctuation No, 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 song. you don't even need to. Look, it's right. No, I'm fed for the audience. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. It's the called punk, 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 Punctuation Song by Leapfrog, Leappad 2. There you go. There you go. All right, that's it. Yeah. All right, okay, so well. um, we've had a lot of very detailed emails in. One of them, I'm going to read this one simply because this is indicative of a lot of the very detailed emails I get, and I want you to... Tell me what you think of it afterwards. So it gives me an idea of what kind of things you guys would like to hear on the podcast. Because obviously I'm doing the editing here, which means the emails we hear are ones that interest me or that I think would be good. But you guys might find this fascinating. So if you do, and this is to you and Sips, like I'm not, I'm not talking to the audience. I don't care what they think. I'm asking you guys, does this interest you? All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. I'll tell so you one way or a, another, you're going to know. This is an email from someone called M, who starts the email, but then ends the email saying, please keep me and my job function anonymous. Uh, so, all right, right. I I'll just read the middle part. Um, basically, they work for Sainsbury's, right. uh, which is also the parent company of Argos. I'm not going right. to say what they do. Is this, it? Yeah. This is uh, so, some context, okay? Uh, in 2016, this, this reads like a Wikipedia article, so get ready. In 2016, Super Sainsbury Supermarkets Limited, the grocery operation that sits under the PLC, bought and merged with Argos in a buyout that was worth over a billion pounds uh, to form the new trading entity, Sainsbury's Argos. However, Sainsbury's had no intention of keeping Argos in the state that it was uh, with its rundown high street stores. It was more interested in Argos's proprietary technology. Argos is in the top 10 most visited e-commerce websites in the country and right. has been for many, many years, despite only recently scrapping the beloved catalog using COVID as an excuse. Anyway, 
Due to the unique nature of Argos, its e-commerce platform and digital systems had to be built from the ground up rather than off-the-shelf solution being utilized like 99% of other retailers. Since the acquisition and over the years, almost all of Sainsbury's e-commerce operations have been migrated and run into the Argos backend. So that's groceries online, clothing, habitat, home furniture. This allows for easier future-proofing, allowing our in-house dev to quickly develop and deploy new innovative features. You'll also notice an Argos concession inside most Sainsbury supermarkets. The synergistic value of this is obvious. Grab a new TV and a bottle of wine and snacks for movie night on the way out of the store, also providing plentiful free parking to customers collecting large orders. But most importantly, the sub-use of Sainsbury store space massively reduces Argos' cost base and profitability at Argos has skyrocketed after closing a large majority of the high street stores, as you can imagine. There is also the future considerations, our acquisition of Nectar loyalty and bringing this in-house also, along with our portfolio of brands covering everything you could ever need, groceries, tech, <laughs> this toys, is like clothing, the furniture, fucking uh, Sainsbury's shareholder and meeting. even banking yeah. and finance What's going on? gives unimaginable amounts of data about the customers that choose to opt in to the loyalty scheme. So, I want you to tell me, what do you think of that email? Um, I think it's interesting. Insane. And uh, I would, uh, it, it's all stuff that possibly I could have just read on Wikipedia if I was interested enough to seek it out. Um, is this like a, 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 a viral advert to try and get our audience to buy shares in Sainsbury's and, that's, and artificially boost the, the share value in order I to mean, make the, money the, for this right? The lingo that, that was popping in there was very obviously the sort of bump that you'd see in a, in a, a this, you know, some notes, some brochure that's going around to the executives and stuff like that. I, that that's, I'm just saying, what did you think of that email? Like, do you I'm want more of that vibes. or less of that? Succession yeah, vibes. Yeah, it's like uh, Ken, Kendall, Kendall Roy. Um, Infinite blue one. skies, guys. Infinite blue skies. We're gonna uh, we're, we're, disrupt. Uh, uh, we're, okay, we're, I want. We're, we're gonna disrupt. go in there. We're gonna fuck them uh, left, right, and center. All <laughs> fuck them up all over the fucking place. Fuck um, um <laughs> like uh, you know, like typical succession. <laughs> all right, improv. I, yeah, I've, I've got it. So, I've had an email here. See, this is this is the other end of the spectrum. Uh, uh, hi, Perry. And I'll keep it quick. The guy sticking up for Carl Walker was wrong, and Lewis was right. Oh. And now, there is a sentence that I'm not sure if I'm legally allowed to read out. Uh -oh. uh, I'll Google something first. Okay, no, it, it's it's in the press already. So, uh, exposed himself in a bar. Uh, oh, interesting. This was, uh, this was all caught on a uh, CCTV camera. Oh. <clears throat> so, there you go. There is okay, a hang on a second. There you go, in a pub. Just one second about that. Like, where's the line? Where's the line right. what? Well, uh, imagine I go skinny dipping. Okay, right. Is that right. okay? That's not whipping it out and pouring at some bloke's bird. All right. And so nudist beach, fine. That's like all the way over fine. Skinny dipping, fine. Well, hang on like, a second, though. I mean, nudist beach, you're allowed to go there and be nude, but you're not really meant to assault people while you're on the <laughs> beach. True. Right. No, you're right. The thing no. is, I think people right. sometimes... Uh, I, I don't, I'm not saying this happens all the time, but sometimes people think that just because people are nude, it's okay to get fresh with them, but it's not. I mean, people, well, of people course, can of course, be nude like a, and not be thing. up for I feel like having sex as sometimes well. Sometimes you, know? you like, can just assault me by being nude, though. Do you mm, mean? Well, like, that's, that's a different... A very that's a, that's like more kind. of like an assault on the senses rather than like a yeah. physical... Um, sexual assault, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, flashing's not okay in a bar anyway. If right? you're whipping out your dong in a bar and <laughs> trying to trying to strangle you're somebody at Donald the same Trump. time, you or can't whatever. get away with that kind of shit. No, you know? yeah, but I mean, okay, skinny dipping in like the, the, the hotel swimming pool, you know. Well, How you're not that? really I, meant it, to be nude there. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no strict law. Maybe after hours, after hours. No, you know I mean? there's no, Look, I, I there's think no strict you're, law uh, there, but I think. Socially, you should have the um, radar and the recognition to know that maybe that's not appropriate. I, I think if, if you are doing, if you are naked in an area and someone happens to see you, for example, there's no one around. Your own garden. No, your well, own your garden. own garden. If like, you're naked you know, in your whatever. own garden, well, whatever. If somebody's well, looking yeah. into your garden, um, if they can't help, they what if you don't be... have a? If you have one of those fences that see through, and you're naked in the garden, and your neighbor's like, "Can you not?" I understand that. What I'm saying is, let's say there's a pool. And let's say it's like a motel where you've got a pool in the middle, and all the rooms sort of arrayed right around. Yeah, it, looking sort of down. Horseshoe, on the looking pool. down. Yeah. It's two in the morning. You've come back. He's, hey, let's go skinny dipping. Go skinny dipping. Someone in the one You're of the Kyle Walker. Right. Someone no, in yeah. the room <laughs> looks out and they see you in the pool naked. 
I don't think there's any harm there. I don't think that's like an assault on that people. They might say, oh, God, there's naked people in the pool. I don't that's care. Cool. Yeah, I honestly right, don't care whatever. if somebody is innocently naked, you know? like exactly. if, if a 75-year-old dude is walking around naked and he's just like, you know, taking the trash out and he's naked or whatever, fine. Uh, fine. But if he's jacking off, not fine. I don't right, want it. What, so you, you go out of your front garden in the morning to take your rubbish out and your neighbor completely naked comes out and does the same. You're like, fine. Well, I don't know if I'd be fine. I would right? be <laughs> a bit like, fine. okay, what is this guy doing? Yeah. But at the same time, like, I, I think there's, there's, there's uh, innocent and acceptable nudity and then there's yeah. inappropriate exactly. jacking there's off a nudity. There's a okay, line and you know it when you see it. Uh, good. Okay, what about um, mooning someone? Yeah, I don't like fun. it. I don't. I don't want to be mooned necessarily, but I I, like I, I respect the 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 rights uh, the right of passage for young people to. I think everybody's done chucked a moon at least once in their life, right? <laughs> like, I've, I've never done it. <laughs> well, I, I have. I've I've done it like once or twice. I yeah, think everybody, but... or at least most people, have pressed their ass cheeks up against a car window. I've never done that either. Oh, uh, you're you not... missing out, man. It's no. Fun. I've got no interest in it. I was on holiday. My friend mooned me a couple of times from across the across a boat or across yeah. the way. Th this well, most recent me, holiday. Yeah, yeah. Was, was it a adults. guy or a girl? Guy. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, and yeah. There was a bit of balls in it as well. La you know ladies, I mean? ladies, if you want to moon me, feel free. It's but like fellas, a, it's keep a, it tucked away. It's like a juvenile sense of humor, which I I, I don't mind either. Like I, I have yeah. I know a couple of people who are like that that are just. I thought it was fine. Like like uh, one guy I grew up with. I've seen I've seen his dick probably more times I've seen my own dick because the big joke was <laughs> his dick was just out. You know, you'd be you'd walk into a room and he just his dick would be like poking through his jeans or something, you know? Like right. and, and he thought it was hilarious. And most people did find it very funny, and then some people didn't find it funny. But no, he was I just that kind not. of guy, you know? Like um if somebody fell asleep or passed out or whatever. Um, you know, his dick would just be like on their shoulder or something. <laughs> it, it just <laughs> oh, dumb no. shit like that. Yeah, this is not allowed anymore. This not is really, not no. Cool. But I mean, it's it's I, whatever. He you might know, be it's... in prison now. You need to check it up. Cause... Well, maybe, yeah. But uh, I, he was I, like, uh, he was. I he, hope he was... cleaned up his game because he was you know. he was a just a bit of a prankster. You know, he just liked to. He just liked the reaction. He just liked, you know, he just liked, not, not so much shocking people, but it was all, it was all in, in good fun, you know? I think, I think the people he did it to, he, he knew he would get a good reaction from or whatever, you know, like he wasn't, yeah. he didn't put people yeah. on the spot with it or anything like that. It was just, it was just, just silly, you know, like we'd be at his house or whatever and uh, he'd be like, oh guys, I just got to go to the bathroom or whatever. And he just come back completely naked, like just okay. <laughs> this happened to me. This actually did happen to me on holidays. Well, I'd forgotten, but yeah, my friend did actually just come out of the bathroom completely naked. Yeah, I uh, was like, oh no. Yeah, it's funny, um, but uh, like it, it, you know, it, it, he was good in that he didn't do it all the time. The times he did it, it was very funny, but he never like overdid it either. You know. Well, this is what happened to me. I, I it, it was very funny when it happened, but I did say. Don't do that again, like quite, <laughs> quite seriously. Yeah, and he didn't it's do a it bit again. weird. I mean, it's kind of it's it's. I think it's weirder the older you get too. Like when we were teenagers and stuff, it was it was really funny. But I mean, I I, I mean, I don't live anywhere close to. Him. I haven't seen him in a while. If he did that to me now, it's a sagging, you know, dad bod, and he's bald, and he was well, doing it might that. be the confidence thing though, and the yeah. the, fu the funny kind of guy. Like, do you know what I mean like I feel like. If you're kind of creepy about it or like weird about it, it's you're not you're not gonna you have to be a certain character to be able to pull it off, right? Mm. You have to have a yeah. baseline, quite high level of charisma to make that work and not get someone to tell the police on you. Like um, you know, <laughs> as I know, as we know, Kyle Walker put zero points into charisma. So clearly when he placed <laughs> he rolled. in a fucking bar, he failed yeah. the fucking check and got yeah. reported to the police. Just seemed to put all of his, most of his uh, skill points into being a uh, defender in football. And uh, yeah. maybe- He's maybe. a very good defender. So I'm not good, surprised yeah. that he failed his charisma check. Thank you, whoever wrote right, that letter thank in. You. Well, this is, from, this is from Jesse. Now, this is Jesse, he's from Australia. Uh, and he sent us a list of things that irritate him, and he'd like to see if we have any thoughts on them. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've read ahead on this list. Wait, and Je his name is Jesse, and he's from Jesse. Australia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long is this list? It's it's six items long. And what? Okay, read them. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bite. <laughs> okay. Sips will bite. 
I've cherry picked. These are a few. Number one, Wonder Bread, Wonder Bread trucks and their advertising. I don't know what Wonder Bread is. Wonder Bread, it's, you, it's uh, what well, they had it in America for sure. It's right, but, uh, bread. It's, I don't understand what he hates about this. He sent me a picture of a truck that just says Wonder Bread on it. I don't understand. Uh, people who use boiling water in Weetabix instead of milk. I don't think anybody does that. No. Oh, I've no. Yeah, I've heard of it. Um, I've heard of it. Well, I've never heard of that. Co-workers wishing you a happy birthday just to be included, not because they care. What do you want from them? No, Jesse, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah. Who the fuck in an office is actually keen to, yeah, to celebrate someone else's birthday? What are you talking about? Number four. Everyone is that. Here, here, this is even worse. People confusing venom and poison. Who fucking <laughs> gives a shit? <laughs> well, the person who's uh, poisoned uh, by... <laughs> I think you mean venomed. <laughs> or venomed, yeah. Yeah. Number five. What? Well, Let's no, 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 it's different. So po right, right, poison is if you eat them, if you eat them, you get poisoned, whereas venom, they poison you. Right, yeah. but how are you getting annoyed by that? Because it's commonly mistakes and it bothers, it bothers people. Well, it's Australia. He's probably fucking poisoned and venomed all the damn time. <laughs> <laughs> you see in there, they've got snakes and spiders and all sorts of shit down there. Well, now, th this one is weird. Lettuce leaves. Shredded is fine. So he just doesn't like lettuce leaves, but he doesn't mind them shredded. Uh, right. And number six, pharmacists pretending they know no better than your doctor. That's a that's a. I, I have a big issue with that last one. Your pharmacist probably does know more about the drugs that they are giving you. Yeah. Because they are specialized in pharmacy, and doctors are not. Especially your GP, they have to know a much broader scope of medicine. A pharmacist just knows pharmacy and probably does know a little better than your doctor about drugs. Sorry, Jesse, but I don't think I've disagreed with an email that we've received to Triforce more than I have this one. Shocking. The doctor's supposed to diagnose, right? Right. And then, and so, but you shouldn't go to a pharmacist and, and expect them to diagnose you. No, no, no. That's no, the no. problem that happens, right? Like, a lot of times people will go and tell their symptoms to the pharmacist. The pharmacist will say, oh, it sounds like you have this. This is the treatment. And then that's like, I don't, that's I don't my pharmacist do The ph do pharmacist that. will fine tune the prescription as well, right? Yeah. The doctor might be like, you need 10 weeks of this antibiotic. And the pharmacist will say, no, you cannot have this for 10 weeks and then give right. you an appropriate dose or whatever. Um, there, I think there's like, there's definitely some working together. There. Medicine is so fucking broad, right? Like, uh, it, it, astonishingly broad, you know, from, you know, fucking ingrowing toenails to cancer, to childbirth, do you know what I mean? To fucking hair loss, to vision stuff. Every organ is like totally fucking different. Yeah. And you obviously have specialists, but you know, if you're, uh, it's such a, such a whole, hey, you know it's what? such a complicated thing. You know thing. what I Fuck had uh, recently? I went to get a, a, an eye test recently because I hadn't had one for like 12 years or whatever. I just wanted to check up on my eye health, you know? I was getting like yeah. some dryness and, uh, you know, just like, uh, I think because I spent so much time at a computer or whatever. Of course, yeah, yeah. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to go in and get my eyes tested and just make sure, you know, I don't want like there to be any weird shit that I'm un unaware right of or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in and I got my eyes tested and uh, I did the thing where you have to read out the letters and mm -hmm. they put the different lenses on and you cover one eye and the other eye and stuff like that. And uh, the lady doing it wasn't giving much away at the time. And I thought, oh, here we go. I'm <laughs> fucking blind as hell. I got it all wrong or whatever. And she's like, okay, um, well, you've got better eyesight than a pilot. And I was like, oh, wow, fantastic. And she said, I'm pretty sure you're never, ever going to need glasses in your entire God, life. You lucky bastard. <laughs> so I was like, wow, that's cool. And she's like, if you, you'll you need reading glasses at some point in your life, but you can buy them anywhere. You don't need prescription ones. Yeah, you just true. grab that's any true. any sort of reading glasses from you know, yeah, Walmart you see him in like you see him in boots and the worst. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. So well, uh, I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that was, is very, that's very pretty cool. happy. Yeah, you're very lucky. I wish yeah. I had that. My sister is the same. She has 2020 vision and has never needed anything. And I'm, I was, you know, I was basically born born with good vision, and then 19, bam, glasses, and I've never had, I've never been able to stop wearing. I take them off. I can't even read. I can't even read the the screen at like a regular reading distance. Oh, I, I, don't, I can't recognize people. Past like six feet, it's fucking shit. I got the uh, I got the puffs, you know, like the uh, the eye oh, test yeah, the that they do with the your puff eyes, in your yeah. eye and everything. And uh, I looked at the picture of my eye magnified, and she's like, "This yeah. is a beautiful eye." <laughs> she's like, "See all these green boxes Man, down here? She's hitting on you." For most she people, is. they're all beige, and you're green, which is good. Your eyes are fucking amazing. Yeah. Call me.
Yeah. I'm touching myself thinking about your yeah. eyes. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, holy shit, man, maybe I could be like an eye model or something, you know? Like, yeah, like George was a hand George with model the hands, in that episode. Yeah. Is yeah. that do thing? Eyes. What? I no, hope so. Well, right, let's, let's, move it, you know? let's move on. Let's move on. What the fuck are you modeling? We've in only your read eye? like three emails. Don't that, fucking so judge me. Right? It's going great. It's, it's going not. Great. I want to get through these because otherwise they're going to stack they're up. They're going to stack up. Gonna, He's got to clear gonna out. We're going to have to clear out the pipe. It's a process, Lewis. Let me do it. All right. This guy is called R. Um, right. So, as I know it's what you prefer, I'll get right to it. Well, you didn't, though, did you, R? You put that sentence in. Get rid of it. Since you asked for some interesting work stories, I work as an electrical engineer for an aerospace company. I'll cut through all this. Basically, he works on cameras right. they put on these planes that fly at about 10,000 feet over areas where wildfires are common, and they try to spot the flare-up as quickly as they can so they can ping the GPS coordinates to the fire brigade and get out there and put it out before it becomes a big deal. We had a major fire that came up in California, and an operator began the night shift in order to start mapping the fire and coordinate with firefighters on the ground to get a handle on it. As I mentioned about the flare-ups, one of the operators spotted one a few miles away from the main fire. They pinged the location to the firefighters on the ground. Firefighters got back to them within a few minutes over the radio and informed them that was the location of one of the forward operating bases of the firefighters. Turns out the flare-up that the camera caught in infrared was one of the firefighters lighting a cigarette. No way. Yeah. No way. And so it is that fucking good. Holy that shit. That is impressive. That is cool, So, I mean, yeah. honestly, if we have these things flying around, that's going to save, that's going to stop so many fires because you could catch it really early. Yeah, yeah, you catch it early. Flare up. And then yeah. if you had like a, you know, a drone that had a little tiny hose on it, you know. Or like just a load of gas just when it starts up it could just get right down there Zips just give it a there. little squirt and it's done you want a drone that looks like like uh those uh those honeypot ants that would be it's fucking weird though swollen ass the coverage you need so of many of them imagine you went out for a hike and you're like oh i can't wait to get to nature you look up there's a fucking million drones hovering <laughs> above the forest waiting to put out like uh, yeah. a little fire you I light a you, cigarette and it's spraying you yeah oh, it's like you need like a satellite essentially like a series oh. of satellites that are zoomed in on areas and with this technology, somehow, I don't know whether it's possible at that range to spot the fire early, but um, this is the kind of shit we're going to need to do now. We're going to need to work on this stuff. Man, you, oh, think, man. Uh, you think it'll get, get to a point where we're just going to fuck up uh, or, or make our world so miserable with all this shit that uh, eventually when we can reach beyond, you know, our solar system and, and find other places to live, do you think they'll find a nice you know, alpine planet that they'll just leave to, to nature and let people go there and just not uh, set up industry and stuff. You know, like for all those people who want to live off the grid, just their own little planet right. that they can go to that's not spoiled by like all, all of, you know what I mean? It'd be nice, wouldn't it? it? It would be good. It'd be nice to think that we can find so many planets eventually that everybody could just have their own little uh, paradise or something, you know? If you want to yeah, live in, like, like some poutine, heavily industrialized por portage, planet. Portage, pa yeah, portage planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Poutine, portage planet. You could I have mean, the, that's Canada. You could, yeah, planet Canada. Canada is, and it's I don't just, think Canada's going anywhere. Everybody like, just eats poutine and does portages all the time and nothing else. You don't have to do anything else. I feel, all right. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. here's, a, here's a question from, from Ben. Not that one, a different one. Um, can you please discuss the topic of NIMBYism, yeah. housing shortage, and your take on how we tackle the issues relating to housing in the UK? Nim I work in construction, so I want to see both sides of this argument. Um, NIMBYism so is, yeah. is not in my backyard, right? Nim not in my backyard a, is NIMBY. A, a so NIMBY, it, yeah. It's an a, a, a issue for anyone that doesn't so know. It's, it's, it, do. it's, for, it's people that, that, saw, that write in and say... We need a skate park. And then they turn around and they say, okay, we're going to build one right next to your house. And they say, we don't need a, a skate park. Are you crazy? We don't want a skate yeah. park now. Any kind of big construction, yeah. things like houses, schools, people like, well, I don't want it around here. Yeah. And they've always got a reason. So they don't, think, there's, there's a reason for where they live to stay exactly as it is because it's perfect, but everywhere course. else needs to change. Uh, of course. Because it, it, if not, then it threatens their perfect little patch of the world. So I, I've actually been, because obviously there, there is a housing problem, I have two young children who probably within a decade or, or slightly over will be looking to, to find somewhere to live, uh, might want to do something that people did my parents' generation, 
and just buy a house, which was a thing that people did uh, in their twenties, in the in the fifties and sixties. I'm sure not so much nowadays. I'm sure but, um, every generation says this, but I cannot imagine that this generation of children will ever be able to afford to buy a house. No, not every generation has it's, said it's, that. I assure you, it's this generation of thirty-year-old adults that can't afford yeah, it. True. It's right right yeah, true. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, there there are some buying houses because they bought a flat. Or they were give you know left money or whatever. Sure, it, it, there are still well, young people. Again, but- you say that though, but currently it's a problem. Like I was with a couple of people on holiday, and they're having to sell their house because the mortgage payments have gone up way too much. Well, yeah, the yeah, interest that, that's, rates that's, just that's, that's really skyrocketed. Bad at the yeah, so. yeah, yeah. They they put them up. So a, a, a bunch of people bought houses. I think I think because there was a scheme to encourage people to buy houses. And then that fixed rate is ending, or a lot of people bought houses at, the, at a similar time. And when that fixed rate ends, well, the fix- because the interest rates jumped up, yeah. they're now facing much uh, huge payments, and it's going to be a, an absolute disaster um, for for those people. Most of the time, I mean, you I, can honestly, is- fix at about five years or whatever. So <clears throat> if you fixed about five years ago at basically like no interest or whatever, your your payments were what they were, but now they've gone up. A lot. No, right? yeah, when you're yeah, coming, exactly. When you're coming the, the to re- renegotiate or refix your right, your rates. But I mean, whatever. I, I mean, I, whatever problems uh, people are having now, it is only going to get worse. Yes, yes. Some um, people are seeing their mortgage payments like double or triple. But even right. even just the cost of acquiring property, like a, exactly. the bank. If you're if you're a single person and you're earning, say, uh, like fifty grand a year or whatever. Most banks are only going to lend you about five times what you earn. Um, if that. If and that. that. It depends on your down payment as well. So, if, so yeah. It, it's so, if really you don't bad. have a down payment, you're, you're immediately excluded. There's no, no chance. And, but not a lot of people have a massive down payment to put down. I mean, you're talking no, exactly. hundreds of thousands of dollars or pounds now. for. A- <clears throat> so, so, there are a few problems here. First of all, what we don't want, and I mean this, is for the government to step in and say, don't worry, we're going to have a scheme where we encourage the banks to lend people uh, with, you know, much easier to get a mortgage, no zero money down, uh, fixed interest for three years, and then it jumps up, all this stuff. We don't want that. That's what happened in 2008. Prior to that, huge property bubble, people buying two, three, four houses, and then it all went to shit. Yeah. We do not want that. What we desperately need is for there to be more housing. Now, in relation to this question, um, where do you put it? I know I, I, re- I listened to a talk, I think it might have been on Radio 4 about this a while back, and they were talking about Greenbelt land, which has been this green belt around London. There are all these yeah. parts and other parts of the country where they're saying no construction here. No. It's important that we have wild areas. But people's vision of what Greenbelt land is and what a lot of it actually is are not, not necessarily mired in reality, shall we say. Quite a lot of areas that are designated green belt are anything but green luscious areas with all wildlife and rivers and gentle brooks and deer and all. it's just scrubland that, that nobody's using it's like wasteland quite a lot of those areas are called green belt so just have a look at, into what it ca- counts as green belt land and just wonder whether we could actually build on some of those areas the other thing is the government allowing uh, people to, you know or sort of encouraging people to work from home and stuff like that really could have been a big part of the solution to this because you don't have to be in London to work in London, if you can, yeah, you could telecommute, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, eases a lot of transport congestion problems. You can build new houses in areas that are out in the country, a bit quieter. Land is cheaper, all of that yeah. stuff. You can build more housing, um, but it's a it's a big problem, especially because we tend to see this as let's build vast estates of new build houses that are identical and as tiny as possible to squeeze as many many people in as we could. Now we did that in my area of Twickenham. If you look at the age of the houses in Twickenham, they're all about 100 years old. And they were all built in a very short space of time, uh, about 19, between 1902, 1903, and about 1906, 1907. Thousands of houses to support railway workers and working class people in London. These were working class homes. Now they're like middle class homes, and they're, they're worth a lot more because it's Twickenham and the area's improved. If you build these cheap new build houses, are they ever going to be worth more? Then people are paying for them now is the question that I think also needs to be asked. If I buy a house and it never really goes up in value, it will though. Am I Every just house stuck does. There? But what if the, the the only reason it would is because the value of the land goes up and people want to live there? But if we all go for telecommuting, right, and we all that there's no increase in the in the value of an area because essentially people live wherever they want, the value of land actually goes down, and the sort of there's sort of a stagnation of of property prices. 
which is not a bad thing, I guess, in a way. You paid off your mortgage and then you sell the house to someone else. They don't have to pay three times what you paid for it to buy the house. It sort of stagnates the property market, but you'd never get elected on that. If you said, we're going to try and stagnate the property market, you'd never get in. No. People want the property values to go up. Yeah, of course. So it's very, very, very complicated. I still think, build more fucking houses. We, we don't build apartments. But again, like... I, this is a problem. If it was a, just a problem of building more houses, then for demand, then private housing companies would have exploded, and they'd be building houses all over the place, and Man, making a lot of money. East, no, they are making houses in the east of London. Last time I went through there uh, on the train to get back to um, to uh, London City Airport, airport. I counted, yeah. and there was like I'm not even joking. There was like 50 apartment blocks. Being yeah, built. yeah. There was yeah. cranes they're, they're everywhere. Not, they're man. not it was apartment insane. blocks that young people are going to be buying. No, no, no. These are like these are all anything, rich, rich Yeah, apartments. anything going up now is going up in an area that's already been gentrified, and the and the prices have been absolutely jacked right up. It's property as investment. Yeah, they're just buying this. They're building a lot. Of, I mean, this is a big thing. Do you remember we talked about? Um, did we talk about ghost cities in China on a previous episode? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We talked yeah. about it all the time. So um, I watched, my, my youngest was very intrigued by that. There's a lot of videos. There's one, I can't remember the name of it. Someone, someone will know. Very famous one. The reason that they built these, it turns out, this is from a, a video I watched revealing why these ghost cities existed, is because when you buy land in China, you're buying it not from individuals, but you're buying it from like the local council, essentially, right? And that council is like, if you're going to buy this land, you can't just sit on it and wait for it to go up in value. You have to use it because this is the people's land. So they build these huge cities on the land and all these apartment buildings because they want to be able to hold on to the land until it does go up in value. And this is actually the cheaper way for them to do it. And then, of course, they also sell the apartments. And some of these ghost cities and ghost towns are now actually becoming populated. So it just seems bizarre. But it's actually just weird long-term investment That's so weird, yeah. that these property developers have come up with to get around the rules around buying property in China. When People have talked to, to us about these sort of things before, right? And they've, 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 uh, there are a lot of jobs can't telecommute, telecommute right? right. But, uh, but some can. And I think there is, like some of my friends were saying, you know, we don't care. We're going to leave London. We don't care where we go. We just want to be able to afford a house. And so right. they're looking at like anywhere literally in the whole UK. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's kind of like... Slough? It, it, it could be... Well, exactly. Like It could be a pl chance to regenerate some shitty places yeah. if you know a bunch of people who work remotely can set up there. Um, here, here I've, got a, I've got a fucking mini solution for people, and I think this is actually a good one. If, we can, if you can telecommute, and if more companies did it, you know what it would revitalize? Because everybody would want to live in these places. The rundown seaside towns of this nation, and that's it. Made me think of this because well, I had an email from a guy from Clacton on Sea. Because we said need to mentioned... rename some of these towns to make them more like Clacton upbeat. on Sea. It's <laughs> not a particularly good name for a place. Is where I used to. So that's where my nan lived, right? Um, and, and for like twenty years, you know, in her time with my granddad, and I used to go there every week. Uh, Clacton on Sea. We walked down the front. We went to the pier. It was a. It's a bit of a shitty Essex. Right. It's like South End on Sea. It's a bit shit, a bit chavvy, but actually uh, probably a relatively like safe and nice place to live if you you know if you want to grow up. And I liked it. I I I mean yeah. I think that. But it's got a bad a bad name like Bognor Regis. Like right. All of these places <laughs> along the front sound bad like names. dog shit. Yeah. yeah. They need to be old, called old like we need places. to give them like cool hot TikTok names. Do you know what I mean? Like, but, like but what I'm saying is, if, if you don't have to live, I mean, the Clacton on Sea is not that far from London. Do you remember I went to Margate a few years back? Yeah. Came back saying Whee. this place, this place should actually be on the up because it's like super close to London, and it is a a, a lot of these houses are really beautiful old houses yeah. with fucking ocean views. Yeah. And nobody's living there. And it's the not a fashionable address. Shit. We need to get them. We need to re, re. We need to get them. Like I honestly, we need to call them like the American stuff. All the American cities have got. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them have good names, right? Like Sunny Vale. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like Sunshine Hills, and like yeah, you know, yeah. we need to um, rebrand re and rebadge. Those some are of these all shit towns holes. that feature in horror movies, by the way. <laughs> That's, okay, you're right. Um, but no, I think that would be the other thing I've seen. PFAX as a as a symptom of this. And I've seen this quite a lot on the dating apps that I've been using. People are 
either building and regenerating vans. And Niles, he's actually bought a Mazda a Bongo, which mm. I think is an old van, or is it? Bongo. You sound, I can't remember. It sounds it's like a, a really good car. It's a shit camper van um, <laughs> that he is Bongo. slowly doing up in his, and it plans to sort of drive around, you know, the country and live oh, in it. Oh, I see it. It's one. And, so for anybody that wonders, it's one of those ones where the roof pops up like a tent, and you live in there. Um, yes, like like someone who's essentially given up on life. That's what yeah. it, that's the image of this vehicle to me. Well, th this is though, but a lot of people see this as freedom. Right, it looks to me like the end of the line. You would be surprised by how many YouTube channels there are doing like small them. scale living camper van life. Yeah, I watch and, like, them promoting it at so glamorously. Yeah, living out on the road. All you need is like your i i Mac or whatever your fucking i i whatever your the laptop is the Apple laptop that I don't use. All you need is one of them, and you know you're you're you can, you can drive around, you can park up anywhere, yeah. You can live this wonderful life in your tiny camper van. It doesn't appeal to me because uh, it's so cramped. I've been in these things before. I've been in caravan holidays, you know, because Clacton on Sea. My 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 nan's sister used to have a caravan, and I always be in there, and it would be you know, it was just so cramped, and that's a caravan. You know, that's like a dedicated space. Well, it's it's only meant for you to sleep in. You're not meant to just sit in there all day. You're not meant to yeah, live in this Look at van. the fucking weather in the UK. Like, well, we've got two months where you can go outside. Yeah, but, I mean... You're in there all the fucking time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's... Maybe you're supposed to work, park up outside of town and go to the Starbucks and go into, like, a fucking board game cafe. I feel like, I a, lot of, I feel like a lot of these ideas come from people watching movies and stuff. But, I, I mean, a lot of movies take place in California. I'm sure it's fine to live in a van in California. The weather's pretty good there all the time. I wouldn't mind doing it for a time. week like, or two, but like doing it for a year, like living in there for years, like that'd be your retirement plan to like do up it, a It's a, it's a, a disaster. Van? It's a disaster. Yeah. I think it's fine. Your van breaks down. I, I think your when house you're, breaks down. When out. you're in your 20s, it's fine. I think when you're doing that and you're in your 70s, it's, it's not fine. If you want to okay. know what this is like, there's a film called Nomad, Nomadville, I think. Um, it, I'll, I'll look this up. It came out last year or the year before. Uh, maybe it's not Nomad. Well, I did see this very frightening thing actually about this happening in America, where people Nomad Land, Nomad Land, their houses and anymore, and their only option was to buy an, a cheap RV, yeah, park it up on the side of the road and live in that. So yeah, that, that's what this film is about. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful film. It's got Frances McDormand in, and she Nomadland. lives in a van. And that is her whole life is in this van. And she goes where the work is. So she drives around, goes to where the work is. It, it's exceptionally good film. Yeah. That is what this living would be like. Such a it romantic uh, notion. It ain't but glamorous. It, it well, cannot look, I'm be not glamorous, shitting so. on any of this stuff, right? I, I just think that it's quite funny how this is sometimes uh, a dream for people, whereas. I kind of, I kind of feel like it's a nightmare. I don't, for I don't want to have to live. I don't want to have to. Damn, do like, living in a van down by the river. <laughs> I don't want to have a camper van holiday in the UK. That's all. Maybe, am I crazy? I don't know. Right in. This yes, is the whole point. Yes, of this. but that's why we tell love us you. about your camper van shit. This whole, this, this whole subject is so fucking broad and complicated. Like, there's no, there's no solution to any of this stuff. The 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 prices of houses, the market, all that. It, it's 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 such a massive sprawling mess that is just. It, it's always just going to be the the way it is because uh, people with a lot of money um, make sure that it, it is the way that it is, and it'll just stay yeah. the way that it is. It doesn't matter how much you sit around and talk about it. It doesn't even matter what MPs want to do about it or whatever. There's, it will just always be this way, and it, no, it it'll, it'll just it get won't. worse. I'll tell as well. you what: the reason it's like this is because wage wage growth is dead. Yeah. If you look at the salary growth compared to every other price, yeah. the cost of buying people's fucking lives, which is what you do when you pay someone a salary, you're paying for their time on Earth. You'd be like that it's, has stagnated. It's, the value of the human being has stagnated. In capitalism, and I'm saying, bring on the revolution! I'll lead one of the fucking brigades. Oh Let's my go. god! Let's go! They got us exactly right. where they want us. We're all fat and useless, and we sit on our computers all day, and nobody is doing a revolution, <laughs> and Speak everybody is in debt I live for the rest of their life. Busy lifestyle. And, yeah, well, good for you, man. <laughs> you, you'll be on the picket line alone <laughs> with your yeah. vibrant lifestyle, because uh, everybody <laughs> else is just too busy uh, grinding up Fortnite bucks and stuff now. Nobody wants to do that.
Nobody wants Lewis, to go and hit had, the picket lines. I've had a number of emails uh, from women this week uh, relating to something that you mentioned on a recent episode. Can you think what it is? He's, he, is he's it back on the bras? dating scene. It's is it to, to do, do with, with bras? bras. They don't give a shit about your not fucking wearing dating them. adventures. They don't want to date them? Well, listen, they don't, but, but that's unrelated. Uh, I'm going to read some of them to you. I'm going to read some okay, of them. Let, listen, me just, let me just check what no, they are, right? I, I'm not Before let... you read them, let me just guess. <clears throat> it's going to be, bras are uncomfortable. It's going to be... Um, Why are you trying I can to silence women's voices, Lewis, here on the Triforce <laughs> podcast? Can you <laughs> oh, please shit. let these women speak? And it's going to be... Without no mansplaining bra. bras to them? Can no, you, you just shut the fuck up? Thank you. I'm speaking for you here, ladies, all right? <clears throat> this is from Beth. Love the podcast, been a silent listener for years, but breaking that silence to respond to Lewis. In answer to his question about going braless, we are aware and we don't care. Yes, okay. sister. I know you can sometimes see my nipples, and yes, I see when other people not so secretly glance down, but as long as they're not gawking, it doesn't bother me. Enjoyed listening to Pyrian, clearly a man who has listened to his wife complain about bras many times. Respect. Well, listen. As, Respect to D from Catherine. As somebody, in regards to him not liking women going out brawlers, fuck off, sir. Yeah, I, I, I go brawlers all the time. I, I, as somebody who's developed breasts over the years, and I, I don't have a bra, I, and I don't need them, and I think if you don't want to use one, you don't have to either. I should wear a bra. I have big tits now. But I don't. I'm not going to wear one. <laughs> so uh, you don't have to wear one either. I've decided. So there you go. Anyway, there were there were several others about bras as well. I just thought it's interesting that as soon as I started reading email from women, Lewis is like, yeah, I'll tell them what they already said. Listen, just listen. Are you happy now? Yeah. Well, it's I'm. I guess I'm, I don't mind. <laughs> you don't want somebody out there just let just. I don't. I'm not campaigning them loose. for women to to wear bras. I'm just saying. Do they know? Do, 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 do they know? Do they know? I what? guess they do. They mu that we can see their nipples. I don't think they give a shit, man. Like who do cares? It was, uh, okay. you know, if if they make it on TV in America, they'll blur them out. Nobody will ever see them, so don't worry about it. All right, no, good. That's uh, fine. Se several people have emailed in about your your Tinder, uh, saying, um, first of all, uh, try Hinge. I don't know what I, that well, is. I, I, yeah, I'm not on Tinder. I'm on Hinge only okay. at the moment. Uh, I might sign up to Tinder. You know, I'm, you're not on. I, oh, which know, one are you using? Hinge. Oh, you are using Hinge. That's the only one I'm using. Oh, that's at the sorry. People are recommending you use that one, but you're already using it. Try it. Try it. Try it. There's one called Minge, which is apparently just a sex app. Oh. Oh, I don't really care for well, that. Well, there isn't, but I think there should be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I believed you for a I second. I know you did. Well, there are like a lot of alternative dating sites now that are specific, you know, to people's tastes. So you can get like farmer dating or like um, elites, elites, elite singles. Right. Um, That's what I'd be looking for. It's like a sugar, for. sugar daddy one. There's like a couple of. Oh, I would yeah. sign up for that one for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. As long I'm as they not, just uh, not... bring me sugar, I'm happy. Yeah, me too. That's how it works, right? That's right. Uh, Your sugar is ready, daddy. Thank you very much. No, I'm only using, I'm only using Hinge, but I might try. Uh, Bumble is the one where the women have to reach out to you, which I, I quite like. Because, you know, it's, it's less different. work for one thing. You just chill. And if you get a yeah. notification, bosh, you're away with it. So this is a, a this is an interesting one. This is from someone uh, called HP. They are the house parent at an international boarding school. Right. Uh, I basically have to live on the school site, look after the kids, run trips and activities, etc. Some interesting experiences. On my first day, a colleague had to take one kid to hospital because he twisted his testicles so badly he nearly died somehow. Jesus Christ! Horrific. What the hell is uh, going we, on at that boarding school? I don't know. We had a fourteen-year-old. If I year sent old my kid to a boarding school, and the first thing we got back from them <laughs> was your kid has twisted his testicles so hard he's in the hospital, I I would fucking lose it. I would be like, "What have you done to my kid? Like, <laughs> what have you done? Yeah, I don't I know. Mean, how I, the hell funnily you enough, if they if they report back and they said he broke his arm or something, I'd be like, "Oh shit, that sucks. Like, I hope he's gonna be okay." But I don't know, like, how, how do you fucking mangle your private parts? I have no idea. Immediately after going to a boarding school, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Well, you know, that's the way, so it's obviously getting into Eton, it's, you know, it's just <laughs> rat smoking and fun with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, fuck. It's just, oh, no, it's just call it a Timmy Twister. <laughs> you know, just give it a little, a little twist of his testicles, you know, just well, one of the boys. Well, yeah, yeah, we all do it. We had a 14-year-old kid from Saudi Arabia who would just shit himself all the time because he was never taught how to use a toilet or do anything for himself at home. So, okay, so in uh, Saudi Arabia, was this the case? Or, like, uh, he was just shitting 
all the time. So I, I think it's just and he's just taken the sent... habit with him. No, no, I think the kids that are being sent to international boarding school are probably extremely wealthy, coming from extremely wealthy families. And Who's putting up from... with that? A kid shitting like at home. Well, if you don't have to do anything and you've got servants or whatever, then it's their problem, not yours. May, you know, who knows what these kids' family lives are like. That is so I mean, fucked up, I mean, putting your kid in a boarding school in the first place, I, I'm totally against it. Uh, we had to speak to one kid from Hong Kong about not masturbating while his roommate was in the room. Uh, one, of my, one time my colleague unintentionally walked in on him, um, found random stuff doing room checks like dildos, fleshlights, a caged hamster, and a woman hiding in a boy's wardrobe. Uh, Whoa. And, and one French kid had a whole stash of those bird fat balls that you hang in the garden. Yeah, suet. And he, he, would, he would snack on them. Uh, and when they told him he shouldn't be eating them, he didn't understand English, so they just left him to it. That sounds absolutely horrendous. Those um, suet balls. Ne mangez, ne mangez pas les balles, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> <laughs> mangez pas les balles. No, ne mangez pas le bal. <laughs> le bal, bal est pour le, le bird. Non, non. Know, le bird. Ne mangez pas. Non, ne sucez What's pas the les balles. Ne mangez pas les balles. What <laughs> sucez? <laughs> Suck. <laughs> ne mangez pas le bal. <laughs> And he's like, huh? Don't suck or uh, eat those balls. Oiseau. Oiseau, yeah. Oiseau, oh, that's C'est pour le oiseau. Yeah. C'est pour le oiseau. Ce n'est pas pour le pipi. Ne sucez pas le les balles. <laughs> ne mangez pas les balles, non. <laughs> C'est pour ne le mangez pas le bal. <laughs> mangez le baguette. <laughs> mangez le, le, le jambon. Oh, le fromage. Hell. Non, pas <laughs> le bal. <laughs> God damn. I love that. The bird balls. That's so that fucking weird. So specific and weird. I know. It has yeah. to be true because it's so weird. I mean, it's, I, I've never imagined oh. someone would eat them. But if anyone, no, if anyone is, it's going to be a Frenchman. Let's put it that way. <laughs> this is from uh, Simon from Antwerp. Um, Dear Trifles Triumvirate. Love that. Oh. I'm writing this in response to a semi-recent request for stories about professions. Uh, Simon is an anesthesiologist in Belgium. Okay. Um, so, uh, synopsis of what we do after you go under for an operation. Uh, they administer drugs to take away your consciousness. The first thing they do is make sure that the drugs don't kill you. Yeah. Then they have to secure your airway right. because you stop breathing and they breathe for you. And then they have to make sure you stay asleep by giving you just the right amount and continually giving you just the right amount, monitor okay. your blood pressure, your heart rate, all this stuff. And then, um, so the surgeon can can do their thing. Uh, I got a question so the, for you. Maybe hold on, hold on. Just, okay. just one okay, more, okay, one okay. more thing. Um, uh, a surgeon will take care of your problem, and anesthesiologist will protect you from the surgery. I think that's a really nice way of putting it. Yeah. And then I like this line: anesthesia is the most Life improving invention in the history of modern medicine in terms of your quality of life undergoing surgery. Yeah. I think that's inarguable. I think that's absolutely correct. Because well, I know when if I had to go in for an operation and there was no anesthesia, I don't know how the fuck people did it. Yeah. Oh, have you ever been completely knocked up yeah, out for have, a surgery? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have, yeah. <clears throat> you feel like shit when you come around. Like I didn't. It's, I felt like you I was feel young, like I fucking uh, like I felt like just so um I don't know the the word, but like not like shit. Like I didn't feel like I wasn't vomiting or anything like that. Uh, but I just felt so washed out, you know. Like, yeah. Like it I took mean, forever to pee and stuff, you know. Like your whole body just doesn't want I mean, that to happen. Basically, to it. sort of s s mildly killed. Yeah. For the yeah. duration of the uh, okay surgery. But listen, I had my gallbladder out years ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I was knocked out for that. It's just keyhole surgery, but I was completely knocked out for it. It only took like an hour or something, as far as I know. Anyway, um, when I came around, it was uh, the the surgeon came up and he was like, "Everything's fine. We got your gallbladder out. Here's a vial with all the the shards that we found inside your gallbladder. If you want to have a look, it's interesting." And uh, you need to you need to make sure that you get Is up it? and start walking around so that everything you know your circulation everything can uh, normalize and you need to make sure that you pee as well even though your body will not want you to pee or you it'll take a while for you to be able to pee make sure you pee otherwise uh, you know we're gonna have to give you a catheter or whatever and uh, so I was like okay fine and I was fine with everything and then a couple of days later I was I was you know, discharged from the hospital. I got home uh, and I felt fine. And then I looked down at my leg and there was a perfectly square patch of hair missing from my inner thigh, like up close to like where my 
dick and balls are, you know, like fairly close. And I just right. thought I didn't feel at all weird or violated by, you know, being under and having surgery and stuff like that until I saw that. I was like, what the mm. fuck did they do to me? Like, <laughs> that's nowhere near where they would have been operating. Like, what the fuck is that? It must have been for a tube or some shit, but it just felt, it was weird, you know? Like, mm. uh, it's just such a, I know it's such a yeah, small thing. Yeah, they must thing. have shaved it just to put a, eject, uh, a line in I don't something. know if yeah. they were, like, pranking me or what, but it was <laughs> weird. I don't think they were pranking It you. was weird to discover that because, you know, so, I... Imagine they'd shaved, like, you look, look at your ass and it's got, like, a name There's a shaved, fucking like, swastika shaved there or something, yeah. <laughs> no, but it, I just, that, for me, was the weirdest part of the whole thing. Like, I, everything else, absolutely fine. You know, like, I, I can't. I can't say that I was weirded out, but that for me was, I, I, I kind of realized when I saw that, that literally they could have done anything to me and I would not have known or been able to do a, a thing about it. I was completely right. out, you know? And then I'm just missing like a fucking square of <laughs> leg hair. Damn. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's it really seems weird. quite innocent. It's, it is, yeah. it, I'm sure it is, but it just made me think, you know, like. Yeah. yeah, it's quite frightening. I mean, you're right, like, in a sense, I guess whoever said about that anesthesia, you know, it definitely has helped painkillers generally have yeah. helped so many people live through a lot of suffering and have a better, oftentimes a better, like, you know, a lot of people, older people have a lot of problems with um, pain, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. And I think that that can really enhance your life um and your your active years or whatever it is it, like they say you know as much as life expectancy is a thing it's the the more important thing is you know how long you have quality years you know yeah um because if you're sick or in pain or in a home or whatever those don't really count <laughs> towards life expectancy no yeah right? they're not not great years unless i don't know i i feel like yeah unless you really unless like it's really well managed connect four. <laughs> yeah it's yeah, sure. Be rough, yeah. Good, good letter. Thanks, P. Flex. Yeah, this is uh, from Sean. Uh, he's a high school science teacher from Ohio. Oh, nice. Uh, and they went to a grocery store over there and bought some British foods. Oh, uh, this is what they they tried. Now, uh, first of all, I would say these are not foods that I would say are the the creme de la creme of of British foods. This is the bog standard shit. Um, that really is not indicative. I'll be the judge um, of yeah, that. I mean, I've lived uh, in yeah. this country for right. 20 years now. It needs context as well. Do you know I mean, a lot of these things only work with a cup of tea. Exactly. Or yes. like on a cold afternoon. There you yes. go. First thing on the list, digestive biscuits. Oh, man. Digestive biscuits, yeah. All, all, pretty basic. all the time, anytime. I I think they're fine. They're great. They're you okay. can have them with tea. I, they, I am brew. I am brew. What did he say about them? Well, uh, he didn't say much about that. He said, um, Digestives are, are great. They're, you can just yeah. get, you can just grab them as you're passing, and just have one or two. You know, like uh, they're fine. They're yeah, good. they're uh, nice. I am brew. I well, I don't, I'm, I don't drink I'm soda, brew. so I'm not. Uh, it's all right. I, it's I think right. it's fine. Yeah, I think. Uh, Heinz beans. Oh God, yeah, it's like a staple. Yeah, for us. I mean, big fan on on a jacket potato yeah. or a sweet potato. Just well, like on toast, fucking hell. He said Even they on were a tasteless. Good piece of toast. Like chewing on sand pellets. No idea how to eat them. You were meant to cook them first. Yeah, you, know? you should cook them. I mean, there's a decent amount of sugar in them as well. I don't, I don't see yeah. how they're. They're, I mean, they're pretty sweet. They, they, and they're salty. very sweet they, by they, default. They do yeah. sort of season them up. They're not that. They do actually have a low sugar and a low salt version here in the UK now, which, yeah. which is I shit. buy dog shit. But Branston beans are better anyway. Yeah. They are, but here's the, here's the thing. Get some barbecue sauce and add it at the end. I've used salt lick, Texan barbecue sauce. Add Everyone that. likes to custom, customize so your beans. Yeah, there are some, definitely some things you can do to you spice up your beans. beans. I, honestly, straight out of the tin, though, Heinz beans for me uh, is a winner. I, I, still, it's, it's still I eat fine, yeah, if on, a, on, a, on a short, on a short, yeah. All right, now, here's another, this is very disappointing, and I don't even think I would consider this, like, food. Hot noodle. Original curry. Don't don't do pot noodles. All right, they're uh, shit. They're, they're it's shit. student. So they're many like better student noodles food. out there. Like it's, you, stu it's panic food. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's kind of like prison food too. Like they, it's very prison. They cook food. them up in. It, you can you can just all oh, you boil water and add it to the noodles and away you go. It's not meant the water to be. What you got left over from a jugging? You can make. Pot yes. Noodles yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Uh, I think a pot noodle is just a, a basically what Americans call ramen noodles. Yeah. But it but it, there's, our there's, British there's degrees expensive of it. version. I think pot pot noodle the brand is probably the most accessible it's cheap they're bad though they're, we know they're, they're not bad. great yeah all right no, of course uh, they are it's, the, it's literally Maltesers. the cheapest noodles and a and a and some salt yeah. Maltesers is the last one oh, i mean man. Maltesers are all right oh, they're I fucking like great yeah, yeah. yeah. Maltesers are fine give me a box i'll eat them all it's not like we're all what's for dinner tonight love oh 
first course, digestives, then Heinz beans, and then pot noodle with Maltese <laughs> for dessert and a glass of iron brew to wash it down. Yeah. Lovely. No, it's just... Maltesers just, are lovely. Uh, <laughs> Maltesers, I don't know about you guys, but Maltesers usually uh, present themselves around Christmas. Yeah, it's like, yeah, a, it's like that kind of. You're thing. at your in-laws, and there's just a Halloween. bowl of mar- Maltesers. Uh, well, I think women like them. I think women. If I women really, like I know them. about women, <laughs> and I, I think that they like Maltesers more than men. Um, I don't know. You know? I, I mean, I, I, I eat there. them. I find them. Women. I hate the term, but I do find them Moorish. Like uh, I'll, I'll fucking eat them. If there's a bowl, like it's gone. I, I'll eat all of them. All right. A lot of people recommending I take acid uh, this week. Thanks for your stories. Nice. Um, You're going to drop some gonna acid? No, they were very... It's given me something to think about, but they're very, very long. Right. Um, yeah. Somebody's written to you to say you should drop acid. About 10 people have. Jesus. Uh, and they, are they reco- are they reencount? They're part, saying it, it helped with this, it helped with the, that. Oh, right. Yeah, they're like giving in a very... Uh, by the way, Melissa, sorry, I didn't get a chance to read your email out about bra wearing... Um, oh yeah, shit! Uh, we completely derailed that there. one. Sorry. It's a very long email. It involves going naked in a cave. Oh. As well, so yeah, it goes it goes on quite a bit. Why uh, have we not read that? That sounds great. All right. Well, maybe next uh, let time. Just... Let's save it for yeah. next time. Well, right, I'll try. Fine. I'll try and save it. I'll I'm not it. sure I could take another podcast of being wrong. All right. Well, all right. Let's do this one. <laughs> being and then that's one the end of the right. Come on. I, I, I can't. Um, let's, I'll, I'll do I'm this searching. one from Melissa. I'm searching. And then that's searching. the end. I, I can't. Searching. I cannot do another podcast thinking about tits for the whole thing. Okay? Is that, right. I'm, so what I'm saying mean? is. I can't. I can't. I've only got a man. I love tits. We'll read that now. I'm a human and that's it. man. I don't we'll, have a girlfriend. We'll do one and that's it. And then no more bra chat. Okay? Uh, this is a 27 year old uh, lady living in America. Uh, is only a B cup, so not that well endowed, she says. <laughs> See, but this is exactly the problem with this, I never, this whole thing. I never wear a bra. The most I will ever wear is an undershirt with a built-in bra pocket or a loose tank top. I will say it's good to hear that there are other sisters out there walking around with their high beams on in Bristol. I stopped there wearing are. bras shortly after meeting my husband in 2015. He prefers a natural look. Oh, I bet he does. I can safely say that going bras is the most comfortable for me. Can't speak from experience for my big boob ladies, but I've heard some women will even wear a bra to bed because otherwise it's uncomfortable. Um, so it's it's up for you, uh, really, what, what you want to do. And then they uh, went on a trip naked in a cave. You get down into a cave with a big group of other people. You wear a robe at the start, and then you whip it off, and you walk around in the cave naked. I don't know why. Well, because uh, it's yeah. dark. Oh. It's, it's safe naked, you know? You're, well, it's... Apparently, well, her and her partner believe that it's... Uh, it's good to, you know, get rid of insecurities around your own body. Well, Lewis is insecure about other people's bodies. So, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a strong feeling. Insecurity is so a strong you're, feeling. So you're, hang on, this is so what you're fumbling around in pitch darkness to, like, to try and go through a cave. Yeah. <sighs> this doesn't sound... It's cold in caves, isn't it? <laughs> it is cold. <laughs> it is cold. And also, this is one I want to say for next week. This is the list of unusual deaths on Wikipedia. Um, I will give you a taster. Oh, yeah, this is a great article. This is, this is really good. Here's one. Um... The Martin of Aragon died from a combination of indigestion and uncontrollable laughter. According to tradition, Martin, this is Martin of Aragon, was suffering from indigestion on account of eating an entire goose when his favorite jester, Bora, entered the king's bedroom. When Martin asked Bora where he had been, the jester replied, Why, out of the next vineyard, where I saw a young deer hanging by his tail from a tree, as if someone had so punished him for stealing figs. That joke was so good, the king died of laughter. That is... Yes. A killer line. A killer line. Well, it's we've got to end the podcast on a laugh. Yeah, you know? there you so. go. If you can contain your laughter, folks, <laughs> take that joke and well, try hopefully it. no one has died. Yeah. Because that's, you know, that is a proven deadly weapon, what you just unleashed. Uh, indeed. With no warning as I'm well. So, I apologize. Um, well, hopefully everyone's still okay. Well, this uh, is a cracker of an article. This I'm going to favorite it. So uh, we'll read some of those on another podcast. All right. Thanks, everyone. It's a good podcast. <laughs> good stuff. Um, I think we covered, safe. I think we solved uh, pretty much every problem once again, uh, which is uh, pretty oh, typical of us. We, we get together. We're yeah. problem solvers. We, we fix fucking, We fix everything. These if you need anything so else. better than the regular Yeah, ones. I know. I, know. I, I feel like I know. we make a lot more progress on these ones because we are making the world a better place one one podcast I think it's because we're listening to the you know the audience rather than just we're, we're listening wildly. and and we've also got our own little quips and 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 goofs and gaffs to interject as well which I think probably makes people feel better 
Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, tackling the big issues. What we've learned, it's nice to know that mooning is either okay or not. Yeah. That having your the, the feeling of cold glass up not. against your cheeks is something you should endeavor to yeah, experience it, at the, least once in your Showing your dick only works if you've got charisma. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and in appropriate circumstances, well, which I, I gotta say, there's very, very few, if, if any, but... Somehow this guy pulled it off. I don't keep know. Keep your eye out for yeah, him. Yeah, keep your eye. Just watch <laughs> out for it. Don't. Yeah. And uh, man, careful Kyle, Kyle Walker. Yeah. <laughs> Next time you're at no, the no, pub. Please don't do that. Um, don't yeah. email him with the time you've whipped it don't out. Don't email him from prison. No. Where you're like. <laughs> making a pot noodle. <laughs> Thank you, little hot noodle. Right? With your tiny kettle. <laughs> Took your advice and now I'm in prison. Cheers. <laughs> All right, oh, we'll see you guys funny. next time for more mail baggery. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.